go over to Gabe and Shoshanka. Um, are either of you sharing? You want me to drive? Um, I think I'll take over since it's a kind of a presentation plus a demo. All righty. All right, so. Let's start off with um, a very quick uh, intro to the metadata model itself. The, the thing uh, Gabe and I are going to amaze you with is how we are able to do no code extensions to the metadata model um, and have both the server and the UI react to it without you having to write a single line of code. Uh, we like to play it um, very live. So it's going to be a live demo and we'll see what happens. It's going to be fun. All right, before we get started, quick intro to the metadata model itself, because a lot of people probably are familiar with the metadata model, but some of you might be newer. So it's not a, a surprise that data, uh, data hub models metadata as a graph. Um, there are nodes in this graph, which we call entities. Uh, these could be things like data sets, charts, dashboards, users, um, John just went through a bunch of examples of lineage between entities. And entities contain properties, facets, or we call them aspects. Aspects are groups of information that go together. For example, a chart has information about it. And so we've got an aspect called chart info. And it's got a bunch of things in it, like name, description, last updated, blah, blah, blah. Similarly, we've got another aspect called ownership. Turns out to be a very popular aspect. It is attached to a lot of entities for good reason. So this is how entities and aspects kind of relate to each other and form a sort of document-oriented model. And then the graph comes together when aspects produce relationships and connect entities to each other. So for example, a chart info aspect might include things like who are my inputs or who are my outputs or dashboard info might include those things. And that's how relationships get created and these entities get connected up into a graph. So that's very brief intro to metadata model. Uh, go read the metadata model guide uh, that I've linked below to get a better understanding and ask us questions on Slack. Uh, we also talked about how you emit metadata model change, uh, emit metadata that corresponds to this metadata model. The original approach, it's still supported, was to emit these really big snapshot MCEs. Uh, and these are monolithic large schema events that have the whole metadata model essentially captured in one single event. Very hard to work with, very hard to extend, somewhat fragile, because every time you perturb the metadata model, this one giant schema file kind of changes. The new way that we are recommending everyone move to, we've moved to it in the open source code for sure, is using a YAML-based registry to describe how entities are connected up to aspects, so kind of wiring up this metadata model together. And then using MCPs, which are basically skinny metadata change proposal events uh, to emit metadata about the change that just happened. So for example, if uh, you want to emit chart information for a chart, so the chart info aspect attached to a chart entity, you would emit a skinny MCP that just has the chart info aspect attached to the chart entity arm. We'll get into it in just a bit, but I just wanted to give a quick brief intro to how the metadata model works and how you emit metadata around it. All right. So as you know, the Data Hub metadata model is pretty big. It's pretty complex. I encourage you to go explore it. There's so many entities in there and so many relationships and we're continuously adding more. However, it's never enough. People always want to model one more thing or two more things, or they have a slightly different opinion for how something is, uh, should be modeled. And today, the way that companies, individuals, everyone extends the model is by forking the repo, adding new models to the existing model tree, adding annotations. So we rolled out no code uh, annotations earlier this year. They have been a huge success. It allows us to make changes to the model very quickly and not write tons of code, but you're still forced to add those new models to the existing model tree, which is in the main uh, code base. You're forced to recompile the metadata service and redeploy it. 
And then if you need the UI to actually surface this metadata, you have to go in and extend the GraphQL API and the impulse, so the little bits of Java code that you need to write. And then of course, in the UI, you need to write React code. And then of course, every time you rebase or merge from the open source code base, you're praying. And so what that means is a lot of people stop doing it. Uh, and very soon we find people are on like a year old release and they're finding small bugs and guess what? They're forever forked. And we want to help you not be abandoned. Um, and that's, that's really the goal for kind of the, the thing that we're gonna be demoing today, which is no code, extensions to the model um, supported both in the server and the UI. It's a sneak peek, it's not in the release yet, but we hope to roll it out um, in the coming month. So what's the idea? The idea is individual companies or teams or individuals can write small model extensions to the core model and they can just deploy it to the server. The server is gonna continuously be merging these model extensions with the core model that it comes deployed with and the UI and the API clients can consume the combined model. All right, if this wasn't ambitious enough, I don't know what is. So we're, just gonna, we're gonna go right into it and talk about um, how one of these model repos might look like. So I created a small repo called Metadata Custom Models. It'll actually show up in the main uh, OSS repo as just a shell repository. So you can kind of look at it and kind of clone it and use it as your base. Don't Please don't ever commit it back. You can keep it in your company and you'll be happy for it. And here's an example of what we could be doing. So maybe I belong to a company called My Company, and I've got this idea for adding data quality rules to Data Hub. And the Data Hub project is moving very fast, but it's not moving fast enough for me. And I want to add data quality rules before these people can get to it. Um, so the first thing I do, obviously, is go in and write a little build.gradle. This is just the shell um, Gradle uh, builder. All it does is just applies the Pegasus plugin, which is the language we use for our modeling, um, modeling metadata. And then I go in and model this metadata. So let's go define a data quality rule. Don't pay too much attention to what this is. You know, some field level stuff, check definitions, URLs. You know, I designed it, it looks good to me. And then I connect it up as an aspect using the aspect annotation, some Easter eggs here, some render properties have shown up and Gabe will get into why those are magical. But the thing for you to look at is, I gave it a name, it's called data quality rules. And it's really an array of data quality rules that I just defined. So I just created an object called a data quality rule, tied it up as an array of objects and then um, made it an aspect. I still have one important thing to do, connect this aspect to an entity. So. Here's my entity registry, which is checked in under the registry directory in that same model, uh, in that same repo. And I called it, I give it an identifier, my company DQ model. And here, as you can see, I'm providing a patch to the global entity registry. So the global entity registry has lots of different aspects attached to a data set. And I'm just adding one more aspect to that list, but I don't need to respecify all of those other aspects. So I add this additional uh, entity registry, to my repository and then I do a build. And then this build generates a little model artifact for me. And I'm not gonna bore you through all of those details. Once I produce that artifact, I can then deploy it to the server and we'll walk through how that works. Um, once that model is deployed, I want to be able to send a single DQ rule. So remember this data quality rule definition that I just created? Uh, here's the JSON that kind of complies to that uh, rule uh, that schema, you know, and I have a bunch of rules in here, uh, two rules that I'm going to be inserting into the metadata service. So let's, uh, everyone with me so far, I just covered extending the model, uh, adding the model extension to an entity registry, um, and then what an entry that conforms to the model looks like. The next thing we're gonna do is go to the metadata service. I have it running helpfully over here on Docker. So this is running on my local host in Docker and it's actually listening and watching a directory called data hub model plugins, data hub plugin models to look for new models to show up there. 
And just to prove that we don't have any models yet, I'm just gonna hit the config endpoint. And as you can see, there are no models loaded up yet. So it's a lonely metadata service. All it's got is the core OSS models and it doesn't have any new models. Now what I'm gonna do is take the model artifact that I built from the repository and just copy it over. So I've got this dot data hub plugins models repo, uh, models directory, which is empty. And my custom model after building looks like this. Uh, it's got my company DQ, which is the identifier. It's got a version identifier. And then in there, it's got a lib directory, which contains the compiled uh, data templates. And it's also got that patch entity registry inside it. So what I'm gonna do is just copy it bravely into the models directory. All right, done. Now let's see if our guy um, or gal or them uh, picked it up. Looks like uh, did. Registries have been discovered. They're getting loaded up. And let's check through our config endpoint. Oh, that doesn't look good. Let's see. I ran into this bug last night, or sometimes. Ah, all right. Takes a couple of tries to get a demo right, but it worked. So it tries a couple of times and then um, is able to load up uh, the jar file. And we are successful, which means this model is now loaded. Now let's try, now let's try actually putting some data in that conforms to that model. To help you all, I actually have a data hub put command, which is an extension to the CLI that we just added, where I can actually add this aspect called data quality rules with an entity type and this data set um, and the DQ rules.json that I just talked about. I'm gonna hit it and hope it works. All right, so data hub was able to take in this new aspect that it did not know about before and the post succeeded. And if you don't trust me, let's get it back and see if it works. There it is, our DQ rule, my company's DQ rule is stored in Data Hub and Data Hub is happily serving it now. So that's the server side of the uh, demo. And if that wasn't enough, uh, Gabe is gonna one-up me and try to show you how that, uh, how that aspect actually shows up in the UI. All right. Uh, so that's while, right. Gabe gets, while Gabe gets set up, there's a question about, can you do this for new entities or only aspects? I have not tried it, but there's no reason why you cannot. Um, so I was, we were focused, laser focused on this demo, but it actually should work for entities. In fact, um, when we finally release it to OSS, it'll come with an example for extending an aspect and also of adding an entire entity tree. Um, all right, thank you, Shushanga. And so for my demo to one up, I will also not introduce any stack traces. So let's go back to, um, that model that Shushanka was demoing before. Uh, can everyone see my screen? Yep. Okay. So here we introduced these data quality rules, but we also introduced a little render spec. And this is going to tell the UI a little bit of information about how to default render these aspects. So what we wanted to do, uh, you know, getting the data into Data Hub is one thing, but uh, making sure that your users can access you view it and access it um, is equally important. So we're introducing a couple different ways that you can render your uh, aspects depending on the format of the data. So there's a tabular uh, data format and this is for an aspect that is a list of something. And then there's also a property bag style render. And this would be more for aspects that are just uh, a lot of properties rather than a list of elements. We're also going to be driven by community feedback to understand what are the common types of aspects that we need to render. And we'll probably build out a few more default renders for different scenarios 
um, to make sure that the majority of metadata cases can be covered by these default renderers. So for our data quality rules, we picked tabular, and then we also just gave it a display name so that uh, we'll know what to show in the tab. And then let's go over to the UI and we can see here, if I go to this, I've, we've ingested uh, a few data quality rules on the logging events data set. And then we'll see a DQ rules tab appears and it's this tabular data. We also have a couple fun little Easter eggs. So if you, we see a URL, we'll render it as a link. Booleans will translate to human readable. And then we'll probably introduce a few more fun render types as well. Then just to demo what another render might look like, I included also a aspect with properties. And this just here, you can see the property names and then the values on the right-hand side. And just to reiterate, this was done not through editing any React code or any Java code. All Shoshanka needed to do was extend the metadata model with those few PDL elements, send that package over to his server. As soon as it succeeds, he can ingest that JSON payload and then it's gonna show up in the UI just like this. And it's gonna look just like uh, any other aspect that we've ingested, it'll look to users, you know, just like it's part of the metadata model. Um, and if these two, def these two render formats don't work for you, we also will have a default fallback, which just renders uh, the payload of the aspect as plain JSON. So just to bring it all home, here are the few short steps that you need to do to extend that metadata model. So clone the repo, as Shoshanka said, um, you'll add your new models to this custom model module and uh, add the models and change that YAML file ever so slightly. C build and create a jar and then deploy it to your metadata service, you know, using whatever method works for you. And we'll provide some examples. Um, add those UI annotations to get your free automatic rendering. And then um, you're good to go. You have your new metadata models in Data Hub. Um, in terms of future work, right now the API is weekly typed. So if you want to request that data from the GraphQL API, we'll just return a JSON blob of here's your aspect and here's the data. But what we want to let you do is um, provide custom GraphQL types and mappers so that uh, you can have a strongly typed GraphQL endpoint for your aspect, your aspect that you're adding. This way, uh, callers can uh, have, have those strongly typed guarantees. In phase two, we're going to want to generate those GraphQL types off of the PDL. So you'll actually for free get a strongly typed GraphQL API um, with these custom metadata models. And then uh, phase three is going to be, we'll have a REST API in addition to GraphQL types as well. Um, so that's what we've got. Again, Shoshanka said this is going to drop sometime next month. And we really look forward to uh, hearing your feedback and then continuing to iterate on this uh, with the community. So thanks. Back to you, Maggie. Awesome. I hope that got everybody's heart rate going this morning. 